Stan Walker, Spacey Ripka, Troy King among others, and is uh, shortly about to tour at the Matariki Soul Sisters, Betty and Munga, mm. Annie Kwama, and Fiddy Michael Black. Uh, Rhea is also a keen uh, kapahaka exponent, mm -hmm. as a presenter on Māori television. In 2011, Rhea sang the World Rugby World Cup <coughs> anthem at the opening ceremony. Extremely talented and good looking to boot. <laughs> Did I mention she's my first cousin? <laughs> A tēnā tātou katoa, a tātou kua karapine pine mai rā i raro i te tuanui o tā tātou whare, a, i, tēnei, i tēnei ahi ahi, a, kia hātia, kia whakanui i tēnei wā, a, whakahirahira rā wā tu kia ngai tātou tewi Māori, kua matariki tērā, a, ko te tau hou Māori tērā, no rei rei runga, i au a huatanga me mihi kātika kia kotou katoa ko tāu mai no rei rā tēnā kotou. Ia ko mai rau kura, aku whatu kura, kai aku rangatira, tēnā koutou. Me te mihi anō hoki ki taku, ki taku whanaunga, taku first cousin me ki, a Dylan, tēnā koe kaz mou i karanga mai ki au, ki a harau mai ki konei. O te rakea koe e Sarah, nā Sarah strong te karanga, te tuku teks mai ki au, i nga kawa te au mo tēnei kaupapa. Nō reira tēnā koe e te hoa, taku hoa. He mihara roa atu, taku taunga mai ki konei. Atu i te te tūtaki i ngā whānau i runga i ngā i runga i te hōhipera. He kaupapa hari koe roa atu tēnei. Te whakanui i tēnei wā o Matariki nō reira tēnā kotau. Ko rea hō tōku ingoa. He uri a hau no konei, tipu a ke au, i te tāhuna o rangatau a 
tātātātū ki tō ki tō kumaraia mai mo tapu kari tafiti ki te karapu ranga taua ano reira he pā paka hau o te tāhuna pe kātū ki ki roto te puna ki roto te piri rākau kai reira taku pā pā e tako toana ano reira nei rā hau he kano he kano he mora kua fiturangi tia rātau no ngā no ngā iwi katoa o te moana o tauranga no reira me whakangaroa te rā rātau ki a rātau tātau ki a tātau te hunga ora I'll speak English now It's wonderful to be here with you all this this afternoon Thank you so much for coming out I'm just here to share a few songs in celebration of such a special time of the year For me, Matariki is all about reflecting on what's gone reflecting on what's passed in the year that's uh, that's that's gone and uh, looking forward to the future and sowing the seeds now uh, so that I may or we may uh, revel in the fruits in a year's time so uh, yeah I'm just here to impart on you what I have to offer um, yes and I hope you guys enjoy uh, enjoy this afternoon and it's lovely to be here thank you for having me Now, I'm not much of a quiet singer. Coming from a haka background, the last thing we do in kapahaka is be quiet. Um, so, um, I'll probably stand over here a lot of the time so I can project my notes correctly and I hope you guys don't mind. I don't have much of a turned down volume on my, on my voice, um, but what I do have is, a, is an open heart to share with you guys this afternoon. In 2012, I was very fortunate to be part of a co-papa called Herangi Pai Huarere, um, with some other wonderful Māori artists, uh, where we collaborated in celebrating the incredible work of Dr. Herini Melbourne. And in doing so, we were able to choose and curate how um, we might present those songs. And the first song that came to mind for me was a song called Tihore Mai Terangi, which everyone probably knows in this room in some way, shape or form. But for me, Tihore Mai Te Rangi is special because I'm a first generation Kohanga Reo kid, 1985, Maunga Tapu Marae. And this was one of the first songs that we ended up learning um, some 31 years ago. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my version and adaptation of the beautiful uh, Tihore Mai Te Rangi. Oh, 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 oh,
Helsinki. I'm just coming off a horrendous flu. I know that, so I think Sarah follows me on Snapchat and I was in Kaitaia two weeks ago on tour uh, with the same bunch of ladies that were aforementioned and I was in Kaitaia Hospital twice in that, in that section when I was touring so excuse me if I kind of cough in between my songs, I'm still trying to get my, my vocals together. Um, but this song is a, a song that hasn't been released. Um, this is a waiata that I collaborated with uh, a group based in Wellington called Electric Wire Hustle. And the lead singer of that group is a great friend of mine, a wonderful composer. His father was, is the legendary Billy TK. So uh, his son Mara is one of my very, very good friends, uh, who's equally as epic as his father. And uh, we collaborated on the song, uh, talking about our ancestors travelling uh, from Hawaii here to Aotearoa. So it's uh, relevant that I sing this song today because they travelled using uh, celestial na navigation uh, from our um, from our, our homeland of Hawaii. So this is called Hawaii. <coughs> coming to Aotearoa, New Zealand, you'll know that his wife, that was the first thing that she cried out when she saw uh, the clouds, uh, the long white cloud, heau, heau te a, heau te aroa. You know, there's, there's life there. So um, I think that's a really apt way uh, to carry on our Matariki conversation. Who here knows nothing about Matariki? <laughs> it's okay to play if we're honest. <laughs> we, we work at the hospital, we're honest people. <laughs> Yeah, not a lot of people. That, well, this is this is a really good thing because it's only through uh, knowing these things that we're able to help um, bring you, impart on you some knowledge and impart on you some um, some goodness that comes with things that are uh, to do with Matariki and, of course, with the Māori culture. So, obviously, we have the Matariki constellation behind me. 
uh, seven stars, and they were sung. The names of all the stars were sung uh, in the wazza that you heard earlier from the from hospital staff. Um, I've heard that there's now nine stars, but we won't go there. <laughs> it's too difficult to go there, so we'll just stay with the with the seven. Um, and and as, as I said, it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. However you choose to perceive Matariki is entirely up to you. Like I said, for me, it's about reflecting on what's gone on in the past. In the past year, uh, it's about keeping goals uh, very much in sight and not too far-fetched or too far off. So I tend to work within the year in terms of goal setting, goal reaching. I don't work from uh, December 31st into 1st of January the following year is the time to set goals. I normally set them around this time. Uh, it's a time where it's a little bit cooler, it's a little bit colder, and so we tend to gather together more to keep each other warm. We eat lots, we, all, we probably always eat lots, but we eat lots of hearty, beautiful kai at this time of the year uh, because it sustains our bodies and it keeps our bodies, uh, our body temperatures at a certain level so that we can regulate the cold. Um, yeah, it's about keeping family ties, for me anyway, keeping family links and um, staying true to who you are. So if that helps at all, please take uh, what I've shared with you um, and use it for yourself and for your own whānau. <coughs> So I'm now going to sing a song that uh, I released in 2014 with three of my other buddies, Fano and Arms in the music industry. It's actually really hard being Māori in such a um, commercialised industry, especially being a Māori female artist. It's hard to really forge your head, so you tend to keep your allies extremely close, and the industry is actually way too small to have any enemies, so no one has any. Um, it's a very liberating kind of uh, um, way to think. Um, so with this Waiata, uh, it's Aotearoa, released in 2014, um, featuring um, nephew Stan Walker, Maisie Rika and Troy Kingi, and of course myself, trying to add in some vocals as well. So I'm going to attempt to sing the entire song without my mates. <laughs> but if you know the words, feel free to join me. <laughs> Hey! 
I'm sure I saw my auntie Denise in here earlier. I'm oh, sure I did. And Dinky, I saw Dinky. Yeah, right, Dinky. My mum used to work here a million years ago, eh, Dinky? With Dinky. Before, Dinky's been here for two million years. <laughs> it's nice to see you anyway, awesome to see you. next song is probably my most important composition. I tend to not do anything um, when I create musically, I kind of don't create within a paradigm or within a box. Um, so I'm not trying to appeal to any certain market. What I do try and achieve though is, is to make sure that I get out what I need to get out and the messages that I need to send out into the universe, into the ethos. And so um, this song is no exception. I wrote this song 10 years ago this year, oh my gosh, 10 years ago. I was living in Wellington at the time. Um, Tauranga Moana is my spiritual home, Wellington is my musical home. Um, so this song is called I Am A Child. It talks about various landmarks um, that mine and Dylan's whanau whakapapa too, but it also um, is appropriate for everyone to take on board because it talks about how beautiful and how lucky we are to live in Aotearoa, New Zealand. You go overseas, anyone that's done a bit of travel will understand that concept implicitly. Um, so this is a song for, for us. to calm water 
share with you guys uh, is actually it's relevant that it's here because Cameron Road is actually was the central uh, transporting way to get from Brown Street down by the Elms up to Pukerohu to Pukehinehina Gate Pa and uh, that is the central way that the British forces back in 1864 came through here up to Gate Pa the song is uh, a song called They Come Marching, and when I composed the song, I envisaged, I envisaged their forces coming up Cameron Road. Um, and of course, Cameron Road is aptly named after the General Cameron, to my school knowledge. General Cameron, Greerton, Colonel Greer. Um, Archdeacon Brown was the head minister down where the arms is, down Brown Street. Um, and that was where the Monmouth Redoubt is. And um, 2,300 colonial forces there, 200 odd Marys up the road. Um, and it was a, a battle that was on stewed in gallantry and with a rules of engagement, which was really, um, which was actually unheard of at that time. Henare Taratoa being a military strategist and who understood gallantry and um, the code of conduct when fighting, scripted these rules of engagement up. Uh, there were four four rules for which both Māori and British would have, would, have, would abide to at that time. He sent that in March of 1864 to uh, Governor Gray, um, who kind of laughed at the letter. Uh, whether or not it got to British forces is another story, but the Māori at Gate Pass still continued to fight to that code of conduct. So uh, my album that I'm currently writing, in the throes of writing, is called Rules of Engagement, based on the brilliance and the absolute um, fortitude of uh, local Māori at that point in time, <clears throat> particularly the, the Rules of Engagement and Hinare Taratoa. So this is called, called They Come Marching, and even though it's in the, my mind's eye when composing this and when coming up with that concept is all about the nuances between love and war, uh, that even though we struggle, even though we war, whether it be in your own career, whether it be within yourself, within your families, within whatever constructs, um, this is a song about being able to forge through and to press on. Show. 